everyone and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome back everybody, um, thanks for watching as ever, it's great to have you along. Um, so today we're doing another glazed kiln fire opening um, and as uh, the students are back, as you know, um, there are pieces of students work in here um, and the most exciting thing in this kiln for me is um, uh, I had a mug that got damaged in the bisque firing, it knocked the rim off. So I thought, well, I'll just do some really wacky glaze combinations on this mug because I can't use it for anything else. So I just thought I'd go a bit mad and try out some uh, some sort of thick glazes to see what uh, things I could get to drip and to run and to drag. So that's right in the bottom of the kiln. So stay with me while we empty this one. Um, so the kiln is down to 15 degrees. It was cold yesterday. Um, so I'm going to turn off the kiln supply, flick the catch. Oh, you know what's coming, don't you? Those of you who watch regularly, you know I've had just the sneakiest of sneaky peeks in the top layer. So here we go. And in this top layer, there are bits and bobs of mine. Um, this dish I'm not going to say too much about, but uh, other than to say it will be starring in a YouTube video on my channel soon. So I was really pleased with how that came out. So I won't go into any more explanation. I'll leave it until I do the piece on, on how we actually did the printing on there. Um, this is uh, one of the students work. This is my one of my newest students. She's called Fern. Um, and she wants to make a dinner service. So she's been playing with textures and oxides and um, trying out different things before she actually goes ahead and makes her set. So this was a trial piece. Um, she's used a, a fern uh, leaf stamp, textured stamp, and then put cobalt oxide, which is the blue, and then Amoco Jade over the top and left the back in just the raw clay colour with no glaze on it. So actually it's really pretty. Although I have said to her, obviously if she's making a dinner set, it really should be fully glazed um, to be food safe. Um, but, you know, it, and also because she won't be able to put them in the dishwasher and that's a bit of a fag these days, not being able to use the dishwasher. Um, but nonetheless, I'm sure she'll be pleased with the first of those that's come through the kiln. Um, this is a little cast pot. So I bought uh, a ribbed glass um, from the pound shop and made a plaster mould. And if you haven't seen how to make the plaster moulds, there is a tutorial on making plaster moulds. So have a look on that. I'll put the, the title down for you. Um, so this is how the cast comes out and it just makes this sweet little pot. Um, but the ribs are really interesting because, of course, they they, they sort of make the glaze do interesting things. So the glaze combination on here is Amoco Sky underneath Amoco Seaweed. Now, you'll know that seaweed is one of my favorite glazes because it moves. And in fact, it has made this ombre effect all by itself where the, the seaweed has basically flowed down. Um, but luckily it hasn't come over the bottom. Although, um, I was being careful with two cookies, so it sat on a small cookie, um, which is smaller than the actual diameter of the base itself. And then because it's seaweed and because I'm taking no chances, um, I've sat it on a larger cookie just in case it was to run right off because I did actually put the seaweed on that quite thick. So that's uh, Amoco Sky with Amoco seaweed over the top. And then I've used Weeping Plum inside. I quite like the combination of pink and green um, and I'm going to use those for little scented candles perfect for a little gift if you're going to dinner with somebody or whatever so um, I'm rather pleased with that how that's come out um, we did this mug in a couple of weeks ago if you remember this was the mug that was inspired by the chap who made one in Barbados um, so I added some more cobalt uh, glaze Amoco's cobalt and I probably could have done with putting more seaweed on it as well. It has moved slightly on this set on this section where the new cobalt has gone on, but I can't say that it's really speaking to me. 
Um, I did put some cobalt on the handle, but I can't say that that was particularly um, successful either. I mean, it's a usable mug. It's, it's quite nice. I don't mind it, but it's not quite what I was going for. So more work to do. Prototype will get there in the end. Uh, and then I have one of the um, cast uh, ombre um, citrus slice mugs. That one is standing on a stilt, so I shall have to mind my, my fingers. Um, and that's been glazed on the inside with Amoco Marigold. And then I've ombre underglazes on the outside and then put the transfer over the top. I really like that Ellen transfer, that citrus. It's really useful, so it's very pretty. And that's a very nice little usable mug. Again, cast, slip cast. And I will, I promise, we'll do a slip casting video at some stage. Right, so shelf out and see what we've got underneath. Now, I had two um, complete newbies uh, who came and did a throwing course with me. I love it when um, I get people who've never had a go on the wheel before and they come and um, actually it's amazing how they turn basically a lump of, of mud or clay into something and then they come back and they trim and then they come back and they glaze. So these pieces in here have been made by the new students and I have to say, as is always the way, do you know what? They do a really good job. So this is Amoco's Palladium, which actually has got quite a few pinholes in it, which is a little disappointing. Um, but that is Blue Rutile, Amoco Blue Rutile on the outside. Isn't that pretty? Really pretty, how she's applied that. Um, and, you know, a nice little bowl. Um, I know they're going to use them for um, oil and, and what have you. So that one is Cathy's. Just trying to see whose is whose in here. This one is Cathy's. This has a little cookie just slightly stuck on the bottom, which I can just knock off with the hammer. Um, that is light sepia, Amoco light sepia on the outside with marigold in the middle and seaweed on the edge. Um, so that's quite, again, quite a nice combination. I'll just need to knock the bottom off of that one. Um, which other ones are hers? This one is... No, that's not hers. It must hers must be in the oh no, this is hers. Um oatmeal on the outside and snapdragon on the inside. Snapdragon is is slightly matte or or satin satin finish rather than um a, a, a lovely gloss finish. So I I don't use Snapdragon very much. I do use it for mixing with other glazes, but I don't tend to use Snapdragon on its own. I'm not a great fan of satin glazes. Um, so that's that one. And then the other student, Bridget, uh, these are hers. Uh, that has got um, just a clear glaze on the inside and then Amoco Storm on the outside. That's a sweet little pot. She did very well. Actually, they both did really well. Um, this one is, again, matching. Rather nice, actually, isn't it? That's, uh, again, Amoco Storm. Probably for me, could have done with another coat. She probably was applying it a little bit too thinly, but nonetheless, another lovely pot. And this is, I think this is Kathy's actually. And that one is, again, I think that's iron yellow on the base of that one, which interestingly is very similar to the oatmeal, but not quite the same. I, th I think that's the other way around. That's the iron yellow. And that one is the oatmeal. Um, and then we've used Jasper on the rim, just on the rim, just to give it a bit of interest on the rim. And again, she's used Snapdragon in the middle. So that's that one. Um, again, um, Bridget has used this um, lovely Palladium. I love Palladium. I know you're going to say Palladium's not food safe. I know that, but they're not going to be eating out of it. They're just going to be serving out of it. Um, but again, the Palladium has pinholed on this um on the inside of this this bowl so hmm bit of a disappointing surface and again that's probably down to application it probably could have done with just slightly more um glaze but what a lovely what a lovely glaze that is i mean it really is almost like a mirror finish and again she's used storm on the outside so again she's using uh, 
using Storm on all of them to get a set. And this one again is Storm and Snapdragon. Um, and they one of them made five pieces and the other made four. So actually they did very, very well. This one she's going to use for um, oil and vinegar. What a lovely little dish to put your oil and vinegar in, lovely. Um, and again, Storm on the outside, Marigold on the inside. That's a sweet little pot, I like that one. Right, so that is those. Um, in here are some of Fern's further uh, trial pieces. That one is um, Amico's True Celadon, which is the green, and then she's used some glass um, on that uh, fern, which again, I mean, that's really pretty, but can't use it on uh, dinnerware because it won't be, it won't be food safe um, if you use glass on your work. It's fine for display dishes, but not for, not for dinnerware. Um, that is just a thick coat of cobalt over some texture. And that one is, I think, it looks like that she's wiped back the True Celadon glaze on there. So she's still, as I say, she's still experimenting with what she wants to do. Um, this is just a little pot of mine that I threw at the time and I did some slip decoration on it. Um, I quite like these little slip dots. They, they're almost like braille on the outside. And in fact, if you were making um, a pot for a, a visually impaired person. What a brilliant way of doing it. You could almost write whatever you wanted to write in slip dots. Um, this is, as you can see, Blue Rutile, and um, it's left the um, the dots visible, which I really like because it just sort of breaks over the texture. So that's a sweet little pot. And again, I'll probably put a candle in there. That would seem a, a sensible a uh, vessel for a scented candle. Right, so next level, bottom level. So this will be where my my new uh, glaze tester is. Right, let's have a little look and see what we've got in here. Props out, props out, props out. We don't like those, we know what they do. If you don't watch my videos regularly, they fall on your work. So take your props out first. Right, now in here, what have we got? Um, that is one of mine, Ooh, and I'll have to knock the, the stilt off. Um, that's mulberry inside and on the handle, and then um, that is a violet underglaze, which I've made the colour myself, and then the Ellen transfer with the donuts on. Um, I like that donut, it's fun, isn't it? Very fun. And I've actually, on the shelf up here, got uh, a pink version that I've added the Mother of Pearl Lustre to, um, which is this sort of brown bit, um, and that's waiting to go into a lustre firing. So I'll probably do the same with this one and put some lustre on it and then refire it through a lustre firing. So anything waiting for a lustre firing is on the top shelf because it'll wait a while until I've got a load um, so I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, lovely handle. And again, um, there is a tutorial on how to attach handles showing you how to make these ribbed handles. I really like them. They're really nice. They feel nice in the hand. Um, so yes, that's a nice usable mug. And that again has been slip cast. So um, that's been poured into a plaster mould. So have a look at the plaster mould making video. Um, again... That is another version. Um, so that one, actually, interesting, the pink underglaze is very, very uneven on that one. But I quite like the sort of faded vintage look of, of the underglazes when they're done like that. And that inside is Weeping Plum. And again, I'll have to knock the stilt off the base. Um, but a nice thing, um, and a moulded handle, which again is in the... Um, how to attach handles video shows you how to do that. Um, what else have we got? Oh, yeah, I love this hydrangea. This again is an Ellen transfer um, with hydrangea on. And again, that's one of my underglazes and I've used True Celadon in there and on the lace handle. And I'm repeating myself again, lace handles on the um, how to attach handles. And Last of my mugs, that one, again, Ellen Transfer um, with the cactus on. 
So that's one of my underglazes and that is Lustrous Jade, Amico's Lustrous Jade on the inside and on the handle. Quite nice that, quite like that. Quite a nice transfer, quite fun. I have to say though that my application of the underglaze on this one is a bit thick. So I must be more careful in how I put my underglazes on. Um, there is a student's wonky pot. So this is Sarah's. Take the um, cookies off. Good job I used the cookies. Um, so this is Amico's Deep Sea inside and on the feet. And then Amico, my favorite, Amico Fog, which I love on the textured band. Um, and I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make wonky pots um, in the future. And I'm just getting together some uh, templates so I'm hoping to make some templates and sell them in the Etsy shop so I'll do all of that on, on one video um, but that's that's a lovely wonky pot and again you know they have such personality I just love them uh, so that one is a goodie and uh, this is mine I was just playing with um, a textured stamp that I made which is a monster relief which is quite nice actually I quite like it um, and that is Mako Glaze called Meadow, which has the glass in it. Um, I don't use the Mako Glazes very much. As you know, I tend to stick to the Amico because I found that Mako Glazes don't really like me for some reason. But I do like the glazes with the glass in. I think they're called um, Jungle Gems or something like that or Crystal something. I can't remember. But anyway, this one's called Meadow. I quite like the fact that it's almost sort of like lemon and lime. So it's a really lovely colour. Um, and that's just a plant pot that I was messing about with. And I think that's Lustrous Jade again on the inside of there. So, I mean, it looked nice with, a, with an orchid or even a baby monster in to match the pattern. Right, so the most exciting thing in this kiln for me is, um, as I say, it's a damaged, a damaged um, pot. Um, that was damaged on, on the rim when it was loaded into the bisque firing, unfortunately. You have to be so careful. Um, and just so that you can see what I have fired that on, I've actually tripled, tripled the cookies on this one because I knew that this would happen because I applied so much glaze. So I've put a small cookie onto a large cookie, like so, and then put the whole lot on a drip tray. And good job I did. Look at that. Drip of glaze. So vindicated for using cookies. They're really good things. Just uh, again, I think there's a I think there's an early an early video of um, how to make cookies for the kiln. So check that out. Um, right. So glaze combinations on here. I've been quite clever and shorthanded them on the uh, on the base using a glaze um, pencil. But this is really interesting. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six com different combinations of glaze. And I'll go through them in a moment, but I'm just going to revel in how wonderful they look. I mean, look at that lovely, I hope you can see that, that lovely reaction just there. Really pretty. And again, this one has flowed beautifully. That one, not so, not so keen on that one, whatever that is. This one is very nice. And that one probably, that one probably is my favourite because I love blue. Um, so let's go through what they are. Um, I actually need my phone for that because when I was doing it, although I put my um, shorthand on the bottom, I can't say that I absolutely remember what was what. So let's have a little look. So, yeah, so this one, so this first section here by the handle, which as I say, that that's really pretty, isn't it? Lovely. Is snow on the top oatmeal band, a seaweed band, and then deep sea on the bottom. Now you can see that the seaweed has pulled all of that color right the way down there. Um, and in fact has just dripped off the bottom just slightly. So if I were to use it on a mug, I need to reduce the amount of seaweed that I'm using. Um, the next one is, this section here, which, oh, isn't that gorgeous? Really lovely. So that's snow on the top, blue lagoon, blue stone, and blue midnight. 
So actually a really, really lovely combination. And if I show you the phone, I'm not sure you'll be able to see this, um, but um, it shows you where the, where the glaze was so I can tell how much of a band I've used each time. And the next one round is, well, that's a good question. I don't actually know what that is. Let's see if I can find the, see if I can find the, because of course I didn't do them all at the same time. Yeah, okay, so this one, again, I quite like that. It's quite a nice combination flowing through. So that one is snow, sage and textured turquoise on top of river rock. So again, a nice combination. I quite like that one. The next one round, which I don't like quite so much, is Snow, Blue Lagoon, Emerald Falls and June Bug. Well, you can hardly see the June Bug. The June Bug is this dark green down the bottom. Um, I don't mind it, but I probably next time would leave the June Bug off. because I actually quite like the flow without the dark and where it's reacted against the June bug, it goes blue. I think June bug must have quite a lot of cobalt in it. Um, and then, well, let me see what the others are. A bit further up, there we are. That one is, okay. So that's snow, seaweed, sky and deep sea. Actually, Actually, that's quite pretty if I kind of section section it off. That's actually quite nice, but it's very similar to um, the other glaze combination that I use. But actually, I think it's probably a nicer version. And then my favourite out of these, and that is interesting, is Snow, Blue Lagoon, sorry, no, Snow, Indigo Float, Blue Lagoon and Blue Stone. That I will definitely use again. But the blue stone needs to be a bit thicker, but isn't that pretty? That's a lovely, a lovely blue um, combination and it drags really nicely on that indigo float over onto the blue lagoon. So that's a, that's a really, it's quite a good way of testing out your glaze combinations. Um, if you've got a piece that got broken or has a crack in it or whatever, it's quite a good idea to then use it because of course it's going to flow across the surface rather than it being a flat test tile, it'll flow across your surface and you can see what the glazes do when they flow over each other. So there's definitely some good ones on there. So I'm really pleased with that. That's a really good outcome. Right, so that is your lot in the kiln today. Um, so I have reinstigated the Student of the Week Award. Now, we haven't had one of these for ages. I'm sure if you watch my videos regularly, you'll remember this. Um, and actually, I, I, I really like the fact that the, the Throwing Girls did so well. Um, so Kathy and Bridget really did well. But for me, Student of the Week, this week, and she's lost it, where's it gone? There it is. Um, I'm going to award to Fern, because Fern's come to um, three, three or, f no, three, four lessons, four lessons, has in had in mind what she wanted to do when she came and has been doing lots of testing to see how she wants to take her project forward. And that to me is somebody who's very organized and very creative to be able to test out different techniques and different combinations to see what it is that she likes before she then goes on to make a big project. Because I think there's nothing worse than spending a lot of time making something and then glazing it and finding that it's not quite what you wanted. So doing the test tiles along the way, I think she's done very well. So Fern, you have Student of the Week this week and uh, reinstigated Student of the Week. So it's very nice to have the students back. So that's your lot. Um, please have a look at the items in the Etsy shop. I've updated the Etsy shop so there are more um, things to look at so it'd be great if you could go along and have a look at that um, and obviously the course information for courses is on my own website which is www.thepotterycorner.co.uk um, I'll see you on the next one next week 
Um, in the meantime, stay safe and well, everybody, and look after yourselves. It's so lovely to have you along. And I didn't say thank you so much for commenting on my videos. I, I have so many people that comment regularly. Um, Karen from Australia always makes me laugh. On the last video with the fountain, she said, oh, you have legs. Well, I, of course, I sort of thought, well, that's a bit of a funny thing to say, but it made me laugh because, of course, you don't usually see my legs because you kind of usually see this part of me. So it's quite funny when she said it. And uh, Celia and Lorraine and Barbara and far too many to mention. But I really, really appreciate you watching and commenting each week. And I'm so glad that whatever knowledge I'm able to pass on to you is helpful to you. So stay tuned. Um, more coming out next week. So I'll see you on that one. Bye for now.